Entry level mining information tickets. Welcome to Australian Mining for New Starters, and today I am going to talk about tickets again. Uh, it just seems that lately there's been a lot of interest around and a lot of advice given from people telling people to go and buy tickets because that's what's going to help you get into your job. Unfortunately, that's not what's going to help you get a job, especially in hard rock underground or hard rock on the surface. And uh, if we go over to the sponsor's website, Underground Training, and this is one that we shared around last week, planning your mining career. And the first thing it really tells you to do is do your research. And the big thing that everybody gets tripped up on at the moment is tickets because they end up going and spending a fortune on these three-day truck driving tickets and the S11 and all that stuff that you need for coal in Queensland and only coal in Queensland. And then they try and use it to get into a hard rock underground job or a hard rock surface job. So if we just do a little bit of research and we type underground into seek, you'll see well over 2,000 jobs come up. And there are entry level ones. There's a few coal mining jobs around at the moment because the coal mining, oh, the coal price has really spiked, but we'll talk about that later. Um, but there's lots of opportunities around. These are the guys that the sponsor has their partnership program with. They've filled jobs around Kalgoorlie and in WA. And if you go on to the ad and have a look down, no one's asking for an S11. Nobody's asking for an R2 truck driver's ticket. All they're asking for is a manual license and some underground experience. And when they ask for, when they say underground experience, what they're really talking about is knowing how that mine works. If you can show them that you know how the mine works and you've really got something to offer the employer. And that's why everybody's looking for experience. And when I quantify experience, well, they're going to want you to know, if you've been underground for six months, they're going to want you to know what lift the tube's for. They're going to want you to know what a refuge chamber is, what a shop bag's used for, what a reamer is, what sort of ground support cable bolts are and how we use them. Those are the sort of things that they're going to ask a person with six months experience. And if you can show the employers that you have got a level of understanding of how their mind works, then you've genuinely got something to offer them. And this ad here from Burn Cut proves it. Because again, there's no R2 tickets, no S11, but they are genuinely looking for experienced people's own, people only. But they're quite willing to take people that have done six months diamond drilling to jump onto the main crew as a truck driver. So they'll take your six months minimum experience either underground truck operating or diamond driller off siding. And the reason that they're taking the diamond driller off siders is because they've been blooded to the industry. They've done their six months, they're going to survive, so all they have to do is teach them how to drive the truck. And again, that's the same sort of theory that goes into the training course that the sponsors got, that if you can show them that all they have to do is teach you how to drive the truck, then it's a really easy decision for them to make. And like I said, they're not looking for R2 tickets, it's just a manual um, driver's license, and that's it. And these are the entry-level operators around Kalgoorlie, so there's lots of jobs there. And again, there's no... R2 tickets, there's no S11, there's no nothing. It's just a, they want somebody that can comply with health and safety and has got a minimum C-class license. Now, these jobs, they're seven and seven, so they're probably starting on about seventy-five dollars to $80,000 a year. But the two-and-one jobs that you can start on as well, they're starting on at well over 100000 for the extra time that you're doing away. So it's just swings and roundabouts with this. A lot of guys that go to Kalgoorlie that have gotten jobs there on the even time roster, they tell me they end up filling a lot of um, overtime shifts. So you can do a lot of work there at the moment because there's not a lot of people. So that's something to keep in mind if you're thinking about heading to Kalgoorlie. Now it's the same on the surface. So if you type dump truck in, you can see all the jobs come up and the train. This is the big one that I have a problem with. Whenever I see traineeship in a mining job ad I all I think now is wage suppression because really if they get you onto a traineeship especially a dump truck traineeship for 12 to or even 24 months like some of these traineeships are here then that means that all they're trying to do is um, suppress the wages so in WA most of the iron ore companies have a 12 month traineeship and they only pay the people 75 grand on a two and one roster which is not very good and it'd be the same sort of thing going on here they won't be paying 
paying you big wages. That's why they're bringing you in. There's still a lot of people with coal mining experience that are looking for jobs because they laid a lot of people off. So what they're doing now, a lot of the miners, instead of taking back the experienced people, they're bringing back in trainees on low wages because they can. Whereas with Hard Rock Underground, because they've got nobody to fill those bottom positions, they just have to get people up to running as soon as you can. So it's not uncommon for you to be able to go from a truck driver's job through a nipper's job to a service crew job in 12 to 18 months time. Now, if we have a look at one of these uh, jobs, and there's one down here, Maccas, this is a good one to have a look at. They, they take on new starters all the time on the surface. And again, if you look through what they want, they want experience on the gear, they don't want tickets. They want a HR license because it's a surface and you have to have one, but they don't want any tickets and they don't want the S11. So when you end up sending your resume in, and if we come over to the mining resumes before and after page, and you send in a resume that looks like this with all your R2 tickets on it, especially to an under hard rock underground job, it might not scream out to anybody in the HR department because a lot of those people are very transitory. But once it gets up to site and the people that are actually doing the hiring, this just screams to them that they don't know anything about how the hard rock underground mine works because that's not what they can use. They can't use any of those tickets. They have to ticket everybody on site. So all you try, all you're doing by sending them this is telling them or sh or showing them that you don't understand how their mind works, and that's why these resumes get culled so often. And I'm constantly getting a stream of people coming through saying, "I've done all my tickets. I've got my S11. I've applied to hundreds, if not thousands, of jobs. I can't get a response," and that's why. So if you have a look at how we suggest people do their resume you've got to remember that the people that actually do the hiring in this are very time poor so you've got to be right at it and you know six seconds to draw them in all right so you've done the underground course yep no worries you've got a clear objective you've driven a hr truck before which is good and you've got some references there easy in the go pile we'll have a look at what's left after that whereas with the other one you've got to look through You've got more tickets, and then it's sort of, you know, what I think I'm good at, and then employment duties, others, and then it's not till you get to the third page where you actually get to the actual employment history of how long you've been in a job and what you've done. And the employ well, the foremen that I know and the project managers I know just won't go through that. That'll just be a straight out, and they'll move on. So they're, look, they're looking for a resume that flows and has got something to offer them. So if you've, whatever you think is going to get you into the job, you need to put that on page one. All right. So, but to get back to the topic at hand, tickets, you really have to do your research. And this is a good page to read because it talks about it down here a bit more. There's a few videos to watch. This is the, the in-depth video that I've done on tickets and it goes through the actual act and why it's all like it is so you can watch that if you want but it talks more about tickets and inductions and all that sort of stuff down here and how to get yourself together for your overall career aspirations and what you're going to do to try and get yourself in because at the moment there's lots about and if you look at the prices you can see why copper's up at 12,660 a ton Australian nickel's almost up to 25,000 a ton so it comes in at $24,943 a ton gold's up at $2,414 an ounce which has bounced back because it, it lost 100 bucks last week so it's um, climbed back over that 2400 mark iron ore's up still at $2,870 Australian and the coal price has been the real big improver. So that, that this price in the US, that makes it $167 Australian, which means that there are lots of jobs around. And if you go and type underground in, you'll see that some of the coal jobs coming up around the place. So experienced coal mine operators. And that's them bringing these mines that they shut down 18 months ago back online or areas of the mine back online that they scaled back from. So there are a lot of experienced people around. But like I said, with coal mining just be careful if you get a traineeship just make sure that you're getting paid decent wages for it and it's not just six weeks of teaching you how to drive a truck and then you know 
ten and a half months of getting paid shitty wages for doing the job instead of doing the job and getting paid properly because that's unfortunately what goes on. I know that was a bit different with the mining information that we do. I think I'm going to do it more like that style this time and do the prices at the end. If you can smack the like button and subscribe to the channel and share this information around because unfortunately a lot of people spend a lot of money on tickets that they can't use and it's not just been like this for a little while it's been like this for a long time and the more that we can share it around and get the word out that, you know if you've got a friend that's thinking about doing or spending thousands of dollars on trying to get a mining ticket you really should caution them and get them to do some more research and get them to do something that's actually going to help them so I hope that everybody found that helpful and thanks.